Hi everyone, this is Noel from Creation Effects, and I've got a really cool After Effects template to show you. It's a collection of 130 customizable growing flourishes, and also five finished title animations uh, that you can use just by plugging in your own texture logo. So what are flourishes, you ask? Well, flourishes are these ornamental vines and leaves and flowers and other plant elements that are used in all kinds of graphic designs and animations. And when you put a bunch of them together, you can make some really cool designs. Now there are a ton of tutorials out there on how to make a growing flourish in After Effects, and they're all just kind of wrong, or well, they range from impractical and complicated to just plain wrong. And I'd say about 90% of the tutorials out there show you how to take a flourish image, and then they make it grow by revealing it little by little using a mask that they animate with a bunch of keyframes. And that's just a really time-consuming way to do it, and it doesn't look like natural growth. And I saw another tutorial out there that had vines that thicken as they grow, and that was really clever, but it was really complicated. So what I made was a collection of various flourishes that are really basic in their construction, so they're fast and easy to edit or customize, and they exist each on a single layer in After Effects. And most of them either bend or morph shape as they grow, which adds a really nice natural look to the growth. So let's dive in and I'll show you how to use the template and make your own flourish animations. When you open the template, you'll see this instructions comp, which we don't need, so I'll close that. And I'm going to show you the example designs first because it won't take long and I can get that out of the way. I'll open the folder here and you can see there are five designs here. If you saw the demo video, you saw all five of these. They show up in the beginning of the demo video, so you can just choose one and open its folder. And inside you'll see a pre-comps folder, and if you open that, you'll find a comp named Your Text. And then open that up, and all you have to do is edit the text using the text tool here, and then you're ready to render the animation, which is this comp here. And if you're familiar with After Effects and you want to make some other customizations to the animation, you can do that. Uh, just about everything in these comps is customizable. And next, let's look at the elements. Like I said, there are 130 of them, and I've organized them into categories. You can see there are branches, grasses, leaves, miscellaneous elements, and vines. I'll open vines. Uh, there's about 50 different vines in here. Just unhide a layer, and you can preview what it looks like. Or if you just select the layers one at a time, you can see the, the basic shape of the vine, so you can choose them that way. Or if you want to see them all at once, I uh, made a preview image for each comp that you can unhide, and it'll give you a view of all the elements in the comp in the order that they're uh, arranged down here. Let's look at two different kinds of elements and how to customize them. Most elements in the template are either what I refer to as open path elements or closed path elements. And you can tell a closed path element because when you select a layer, you see a mask that forms a complete shape. So the mask goes all the way around in a complete loop. Compare that to an open path element where the mask is just a line. And you can see the ends don't connect uh, to make a closed shape. So these open path elements are the vines mostly, and they work by using a write-on effect on an open path. So let's talk about how to customize these. Uh, perhaps most importantly, how do you change the duration? Uh, by default, all elements grow for three seconds before they stop. And if you want to change that, you just select a layer and hit the U key, and that will reveal the keyframes for the layer. And uh, you can see the last of these keyframes are at the three second mark. So what you do is select them all, just click and drag, and then hold down the Alt or Option key and click on the very last keyframe, so any of the furthest right keyframes, and then you can drag it to the left or right and essentially squeeze or stretch the animation. So if I wanted it to grow for five seconds, I'd bring these over here like this. And one thing you may notice if you make the duration shorter is that sometimes the elements turn into a series of dots, and that's the brush spacing property, which you can find if you go to your effect controls panel and open the write on effect. It's here. So you can turn that all the way down, and that will usually take care of the dots. Or maybe the dots are the look that you're going for, in which case you can just turn the value up. 
And if you want to change the color of an open path element, it's not hard. You just reveal the keyframes to the layer. So hit the U key. And then you'll see two keyframes, uh, which create a color gradient from the base of the vine to the tip. So you can go to either keyframe and change the color or add new keyframes and, and get a variety of colors in there. All right, let's talk about brush size, which is how you make a vine different widths. And if I reveal the keyframes with the U key, uh, you can see this vine has some keyframes on the brush size property. If I go to the beginning, you see it starts thicker with a brush size of 30. And then near the end, it thins to a size of 2.3. And then it climbs back up to 6 to create this little bulb at the end. So you can add as many keyframes as you want uh, to give your vines all kinds of details and variation. Uh, the one thing to note is that I made this template in CS5 and the write-on effect in CS5 has a brush size limit of 50, which is why none of these vines are very thick. But fortunately, if you're using Creative Cloud, the limit is much higher, so you'll be able to increase that and make some really thick vines. Now, what if you want to change the size of these elements? Uh, you can scale it down as much as you want, and that's no problem. But if you want them to be bigger, like if you're working in 4K and you want to fill the frame, you can't just scale the layer up because you'll lose sharpness. So instead, you can select a layer and then go to the Layer menu and choose Solid Settings. And then you can enter in new dimensions for the layer. I'll just enter in times 2. And that'll double the size. So now it's bigger, but the, uh, the width of the vine hasn't changed. So you may want to go into the brush size property and increase that as well. The last important customization I want to show you is changing the shape of these elements. For open path elements like this one, there's a few steps. Uh, the first step is to edit the path. So you can use the move tool to select a vertex and move it around. And if you hold down Command and Option on a Mac, or Control and Alt, I think, on a PC, uh, you can click to add new vertices. Or you can use the Pen tool to do that, too. And so after you do that, make sure your keyframes are showing on the layer. So hit the U key if you haven't already. But I uh, also want to see my mask in here. And usually the shortcut for that is the M key. But I want to keep all these properties visible. So I'll hold down Shift and type the M key, and that reveals the mask path. And I'll select that and copy it. And then I'll select my brush position property, and I'll delete the keyframes that are there. And I'll go to the first frame of the layer and paste the mask path right onto that brush position property. And that'll create a bunch of new keyframes, uh, which will only last two seconds. So we need to stretch them out a little to uh, match the duration of these other keyframed properties. And now we're almost done, but if you played this back, the growth wouldn't be very smooth, and it wouldn't look good. What we want is for the growth to slow down as it gets to the end. So the way that we do that is by using an Easy Ease keyframe. Um, I'm going to scroll over so you can see this. So right-click the very last keyframe on the Brush Position property. Go to Keyframe Assistant and choose Easy Ease In. And that will look okay, but it's still not slow enough for my taste. So what I do is I then go to the Graph Editor. And I'm not going to go into detail about how the Graph Editor works, but I'll just show you what to do. With that last keyframe selected, just drag this handle over to the left a little to slow down the animation some more at the end of the uh, three seconds. And now that you know how to do that, you can probably guess how you would make a completely new vine flourish. Uh, you can just copy any layer and then delete the uh, mask path that's already there and just draw a completely new one with your pen tool. And then you would just copy that mask path to the brush property like I just showed you. Let's take a look at some closed path elements now. These are a little different because they don't use a write-on effect. Uh, this leaf element is a solid layer with a mask. And you can see if I scrub through, the mask changes shape over time. And if I reveal the keyframes, you can see two keyframes on the mask path. So if you want to adjust the shape, you can just go to the last keyframe and then edit the shape of the mask.
And if you want to edit the colors of this, you can just go to this ramp effect and change the uh, start color for the base and the end color for the tip. And um, other than that, there's just a couple other effects on this layer. There's a transform effect with a couple keyframes on the scale to uh, make the element grow. And then there's this Bezier warp effect, which makes the element bend over time. And that effect is used a lot on these elements, and it can be found in the uh, effects library, which brings us to our last feature that I want to show you. If you uh, open the effects library comp here, you'll see a bunch of layers, and each one has an effect that you can copy over to your elements to change their look or behavior. And I basically went through all of the effects in After Effects, and I, I tried them all, and I picked out the ones that were most relevant or, or looked the best on these growing elements. And right now, the, uh, the plane element is showing. So here's a very basic growing shape with no effects. And if you hide that and then unhide any of these other layers, you can preview uh, that same shape with, with the different effects. And if you double click these markers here, you can read a little description of the effect and how you can copy it over. Uh, just note that some of these layers have the words contain keyframes in the uh, description. So to copy this wave warp effect, uh, which has keyframes, you can select a layer and then go to the effect controls panel and copy the effect and then go back to your element And uh, since we're copying keyframes with the effect, we want to be sure that we go to the first frame of that layer. And uh, with that layer selected, you can then copy the effect. And now if I open the effects for that layer, I can see the wave warp effect here. And the keyframes are there as well. And those keyframes are going to be pasted to wherever you are in the timeline. So it's important to go to that first frame um, before you paste. And then you can go and select the keyframes and stretch them out or squeeze them so that they uh, match the duration of that element's growth. And the only other thing to note about the effects library uh, is these last two layers are effects that are only for open path elements. And actually, they already exist on most open path elements, but they're here if you need them. Uh, this one just has a high brush spacing property, so it creates dots. And this one uh, makes the tips of vines narrow and pointed as the vine grows. So that's everything I wanted to show you. Uh, I release you, so go make something awesome. If you like these kinds of effects, be sure to check out the templates at creationeffects.com. I'm always working on something like VHS effects or glitch effects um, or the newest big one, which was art effects. And you can also like the Facebook page for creation effects and stay up to date that way. Thanks for watching.